what makes the greats great what makes the successful successful what makes the brilliant brilliant our tuesday meetups with the celebrities of pharma industry and science are your one stop shop to all these answers and more join us for pies of life an initiative of the biopatrika industry mentorship program where we bring your dream mentors to you so uh, you and i had exchanged some notes about you know what you could start off with but maybe maybe you can you can speak for about 5 minutes or so and just give your point of view of the world view of what you think about and then we'll open it up okay, okay now that's uh, yes if it's i mean uh, if i have to put it in 5 minutes i think it's uh, firstly it's a great beautiful world which is created by us i mean there's nothing which is uh, beyond uh, our own control and uh, uh, in that i mean f- finally at the end of the day uh, while we uh, go ahead in our uh, f- following our passions our dreams uh, it sort of really is nice in the world if this passion and dream and your career goals are aligned because if you're trying to do something for because someone else told you to do it i mean that passion doesn't come in right it ha- it's something that you want from within it, you get out the best of it that's i think the first thing and uh, secondly i really appreciate these kind of uh, connections because i don't know if you've heard in uh, i do a lot of these kind of things for miss mostly it's been with the medicos and young uh, students coming up and things and i always tell them that i'll speak in your lingo and i said uh, if we got lost we probably stuck our head out of the car and asked where's the way to go you know how do you go ahead but um, you people don't need to do that you just have your google maps because you immediately and we will also become tech savvy and learn to google map but the bottom line is you need a map so i think in your uh, path that you take which will, is never smooth because if it was smooth it would not be fun it has to have its challenges because it makes the uh, uh, destination all the more worthwhile so you have to learn to this thing and not give up on that path and when you're lost in that you probably need a map and my definition of a map is you need a mentor you need the correct attitude and you need passion if you can put these three together i think you got your you know you've got the right car you've got the keys you've got the petrol you got the road and uh, you can it becomes all the more easier to reach where you would like to reach uh, and the second message that i love to tell everyone is that we get so sometimes so focused that we forget uh, that there's more to life than just a goal and that i try to what mantra that i've followed throughout my life is i call it my 80 20 mantra where uh, 80% i'm doing you know what i'm want to to reach my goal but i keep 20% of me for some other things which because life is beautiful and uh, you don't want to miss out on the journey because you are just looking at that goal all along so you have your hobbies uh, so it's in, in everything i mean if you're reading for say your <clears throat> you know, very specific aspect of some cellular aspects or immunology and phd and your heavily but i feel 20% of the time you must read fiction you must read of current affairs you can read whatever uh, else which fascinates you because lateral thinking comes only out of uh, uh, widening your horizons and then if 50% 80% of the time you're working 20% is me time and in that me time there has to be something which is a hobby which lets you let your hair down and you enjoy doing it because you can come back with a fresh focus when you have hobbies it could be music like narain and me have go a long way from our school days you know and um, i mean the other day he sent me and i said was that a mouth organ is no now it's the flute so I, what's important is doing that or even today i mean you know i <clears throat> come what may i even if i've reached late and before it's not yet sunset i'd probably go for a jog or go for a walk or get into something which is outdoor physical uh, so it keeps a fit mind in a fit body so i think that aspect of balancing this out is very important and the third is when you reach out and even your friends 
I said 80% of the time you're all the time hanging around with your own, you know, birds of a feather stick together. But uh, 20% of the time, if you're, it's outside of your thing, again, it brings in a huge perspective to your thought process. I mean, if I had only doctors as friends, right, I would probably just talk medicine and disease. But I've got, the, uh, you know, people from IIT, I've got the psychologists, I've got uh, people who are into painting, fine arts. So that brings a huge uh, difference uh, to your personality where you can hold on into any audience and say, okay, what's your interest? Okay, books. Let's say, okay, which is the one you read? Did you read this one? You know, you can get into a conversation. And I think that's also equally important when you're networking. If you're looking at, because finally to get, get on, you are networking. And you need, in your networking, you have to have a bouquet. It can't always be just one type of flowers. I mean, you you know, mix and match. You'd have all the Rajnigandhas. You'd only have the smell, but you'd want some roses put in and you'd want some greens there because that makes the bouquet beautiful. So I think uh, I'll end over here and take just start shooting now. So I would like questions now. Great. So Raji, let's go ahead. Yes. Uh, thank <clears throat> you so much, ma'am, for taking out your time. Uh, my first question is, um, does being woman had any special challenges in this journey? Uh, not really. Not really. I, why I would say not really is because uh, probably one never grew up uh, to be told that, you know, no one ever reminded me from my young days. I mean, uh, we were in a co-ed school, so where uh, you were all here and we hung out together. We went, I, you know, medicine was again about that. And yes, uh, people ask me, like, I mean, I went into a very, very uh, male domain, which was the armed forces. And at our time, we would be a like hardly, you know, like those uh, uh, extinct species or something, rare birds sighted kinds of things. But uh, I would say that it was male predominant, but not male dominated. So there's a difference between the two. And at the end of the day, I think uh, it's your competence. It's your competence which really matters uh, and your capability and your own confidence about yourself. The moment you start thinking that uh, you're already trying to put yourself like Emma, I would say if I would think Emma and since the majority of your uh, women here, I would think that it's an additional, it's an asset to be a woman, not a challenge because you have one whole extra chromosome which makes you... Uh, capable of a whole lot of things which the guys can't. Sorry guys, I mean there are uh, you are there but uh, yeah <laughs> because I, I mean I uh, to tell you honestly now I'm in a uh, you know on a very high level this thing where I'm probably the only woman who, in that entire South Block corridor and I walk around and I and I find that uh, I mean why can't guys multitask when I even when I hold my conference in the morning and I'm saying okay he says, ma'am, this I'll do today, then I'll do. I said, why, damn it, can't you do the two things together? And then I just today quoted myself in this whole, uh, around my conference table. And I said, sorry, I have always done 10 things at a time. And I realized that you do have, because I know that you all can't. And if you have to do it well, you'll probably do it to perfection. But you must concentrate on one thing. So I'll let you do it your way. I mean, I actually said that. So uh, uh, that is one thing. And the second aspect is, uh, you know, the biggest difference is probably physical. But today, is it about a physical or is it a mental? And I know, is there any difference? No, there isn't. Uh, and the society is moving to an inclusivity. Where, uh, I mean, as it is, you're getting extra opportunities. So that gives you, again, an additional advantage. I remember my son uh, when he was going in for engineering and he said, I wish I was a girl. I said, wow, that's a friend. Why? He says, you see, the best colleges, reservations are for girls. The reservations are for women. I mean, does anyone ever think of higher class boys that they also need something? And I, you know, <laughs> it's about caste, it's community, and then there's women. So I said, I never thought of it because one never looked at it like that. So all these reasons... I feel it's an opportunity and the thing I'd like to close on on this is because all of you are girls. What I tell all girls is uh, I hate when someone says, you know, be like a man. 
I said, don't, please don't forget you're a woman. Mm -hmm. You bring a strength to your workplace, to your studies, a certain amount of qualities, and you need both, both thought processes. So don't think like a man or act like a man. You be like a woman and you think like a woman, like a woman and you'll probably, you know, together with uh, this thing, work as a team. That brings in the best. Excellent. I see Dipti's raised her hand. So Dipti? Yeah. Yes. Hello. Uh, it's Hi, Dipti. Again. <laughs> um, and thank you for taking the time to speak with us. What um, are you doing now, Dipti? I work in the arts, so I'm the I'm yeah. black sheep of yep. the entire group, I think. <laughs> no, I I, uh, I love that because uh, let me, sorry girls, I'm going to uh, take a little aside because I've been knowing Dipti from, I think she was when she was born and uh, uh, you know what Vibhuti says, she's into design and she's in there and she says, you know, you people are so boring, all too left brain. Thank God there's me right brain. So I don't think you're, you're the white sheep there. Good. <laughs> Thank you for that. Um, so, you know, in, in all of the conversation that we've been having about mentors, mentorship, and how um, mentors can help guide um, young people, uh, people who are in the middle of their career, so on and so forth. What I'm always curious about is once you have reached where you are, um, you've, you've gone through lots of trials, you've learned many, many life lessons, um, you've figured out yourself in a sense that you know what makes you tick uh, and so on and so forth. Um, as someone of my age, I know what I'm currently de dealing with. Um, but what I want to know is, after all that you have accomplished, what is it that you maybe struggle with or what is it that you find yourself having to work through as a challenge? I think that would be really interesting for us to know, um, to see what are the differences, where should, where should we perhaps aspire to get to? Um, yeah. So if you could share something. Yeah, I think that's an excellent question. Uh, uh, and I don't think it, uh, that it's, uh, firstly, I think uh, what you this thing is, it's not something that a mentor can tell you because each one has his own experiences and own challenges. But uh, uh, what the mentor can is be a good listener and uh, probably give you options. I mean, I look at it that way when I uh, mentor a whole lot of students is I give them the pros and cons from my perspective but I tell them, go sleep over it and bring in your perspective. Because I can tell you only my perspective, which gives you this thing. And uh, I think it was Naren who once said that, uh, you know, uh, you start information and then you uh, carry on and assimilate and get it, get, you know, you, as you get into post-graduation, post-doctoral and all those, your information changes to some kind of a knowledge. And then by the time you really get wisdom, you've kind of aged and, you know, then you want to start partoing it around. But the fact is the journey is not the same. Your goals are not the same. Your aspirations are not the same. So you can never uh, extrapolate that to someone, but you can definitely provide the tools through mentorship. Okay, what's your problem You this? Okay, maybe could you like to, as an outsider, like to try it out like that? So that's one thing. As for my own challenges, I think my uh, biggest this thing was work-life balance. And I don't think it's, uh, uh, like I said, in art, this thing probably it was more about being a woman, it made it more difficult. But as uh, generations are changing, I think this is a pul uh, issue for both partners, especially if both are working, because uh, uh, you would need to, you know, where to kind of, uh, divide out and say okay and you you're all the time torn out between look I need to be home I need to be there for the children and this is the most important uh, uh, time or you know there was uh, this thing at this one uh, I've got, got a lot of phone calls there's one video which has gone viral in which uh, I just gave an example of what exactly you said I, 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 but uh, I would follow two things every time I would try and shut my eyes and say what means most to me at this moment uh, is something that if, if I did it later, I, I'll still have time to do the uh, makeup for what I'm missing by doing this thing, then let me choose this. That always sort of helped me uh, as a tool. 
and the second uh, uh, thing was you know then uh, take it on from that so there was this incident where i was handling a little 500 gram uh, baby in the hospital which really needed me to be there full time and husband was posted somewhere else and at this uh, little 3 year old daughter who was running high grade fever and it kind of really hurt when you know i had to leave because there was a call and she said i think i'll have to be really sick for you to first come and sit with me as see as a mom i was at that point uh, and it really i said what should i do because yes she has a point she's running a high fever she wants me to sit with her but the fever i can come back and look after whereas this baby is not breathing well i need to go to the hospital so i was torn for few seconds then it, a brilliant idea came to my mind you know i told her i said suppose we both go together so i uh, wrapped her up we got on to the this thing and i admitted her into the hospital you know i'm the same this thing and i said okay you're there and my baby is there and i can look after both of you and i uh, you i think it was not a solution that i would say everyone can do but it was at that moment it just struck me and uh, i mean 30 years later this it's almost 25 years later this happened in 1994 so it's really 25 26 years later when i get this phone call uh, uh, you know some time back because i was at the newspapers and things and this girl and she said i'm pinky speaking and i said who's pinky she said ma'am aapko yaad nahi hai lekin uh, my i grew up through life knowing that uh, i was a 500 grammer in those days 500 didn't survive and they said uh, everyone gave up for dead where you picked up and three months i believe you nursed me so all through life my parents have told me there was this lady who had and the mom had been discharged and they came back and then i laughingly said isko pinky bulao because she is like a little pink chicken you know just 500 grams and her the name stuck and she is now garima she's finished her mcom from bhu she's married and she's just moved to delhi and she says i want to come and meet you so then i look back i said probably that day i did the right thing you know i mean yes my daughter was this thing was a little cut up with me but this girl has lived to you know see this day and uh, uh, daughter is also happy so it may not always work out but at that time it probably you take these kind of decisions great uh, thank uh, you gagan gagan jo uh, if you can quickly introduce yourself in two lines and then uh, ask the question please gaganju yes sir hi uh, ma'am hi uh, gagan this is uh, dr gagan i am a professor in uh, khalsa college mumbai okay uh, ma'am i'm just asking you one actually you told a bit of that also uh, it is like you actually a woman juggle in the life of home and the work at the yeah. same times there are some places where the woman has to sacrifice for her career also you know yes. she has much more abilities to go outside venture things but due to family and kids she has to sit back and then when she has to again start up she has to go to the back to the old mentor or she can take a new mentor and start a fresh things it depends on what you're looking for i mean if uh... you know the mentor is not a constant person just the way i said uh, i sometimes tell role models you know people say do you have a role model and i said i don't think you need one role model you need everyone is a role model so some day it could be your friend some day so the mentorship role also changes because that uh, a, a person who would be able to guide you best is someone who's been through or who understands because you have your priorities right and someone who understands those someone who is not connected to you and uh, try to give you some gyan uh, you'll say ki it's easy preaching that is may may not be mentoring it may be preaching so i think it would be on your circumstances but having said that you know i uh, i again want to give a little different perspective to taking uh, decisions of this we all feel that okay maybe i lost out but in your losses you always have gains because at the end of the day you're looking at the full picture you know like uh, people ask me like why did you you know i mean you you are so brilliant why did you join the armed forces why did you do this why did 
you could have you know gone abroad or the time that i didn't went go for a post graduation because i had a small son and i wanted him to be at least two and a half so i took four and a half years later that i went back for a post graduation or when i did my super specialization i went back you know eight years later and uh, no one would have thought of going back to studies you know after such a break but uh, uh, at the end of the day maybe i lost up this but i could make that up but I, I, I probably you know at 45 if i decided ki now i'll get married and have children probably i couldn't have done that so you know <laughs> what i mean to say everything has time and whatever you do is not a loss like at the other day i was doing a mentoring session that people said that i mean you know in uh, there's so much we've lost out because of this stay at home and lockdowns and things i said have you thought of how much you've gained because you've suddenly got more me time you got you're being able to do everything and yet spend time at home you've started learning you know going back to doing at least i was you know cooking every day and because it was the highlight of the thing you stop stepping out and eating and going to the pubs Uh, you are spending time in maybe board games and you know sitting around with uh, your family because you have this thing which you would have probably uh, i mean i was locked down in pune with my son and daughter and my daughter was visiting from the us and we all looked at each other the first few days i said do you realize we never ever stayed together like this and then we said okay that's let's party for that reason <laughs> because when I mean, the five of us so these are small things that uh, at the end of it uh, we've gained also a lot we've learned to do so many things we've gone back to our culture i mean our basic indian culture of you know ki namaste karo now the world is following uh, we have talked always of ki i mean the amount of hand washing we were taught and the indian culture no one is ever except probably when they you know go to the washroom or something but because we eat with our hands so we want to eat, wash before we eat we want to wash after and now the whole world is talking about hand washing so uh, so everything has its pluses the whole look at the environment the uh, you know whales have started uh, uh, you know this thing the animals have reclaimed their land i walk out in delhi on main roads you know i have these peacocks are walking around and it's going to be a short time and they're all going to go back i actually saw sparrows in pune I, i thought they were extinct you never see those little chimneya we used to call them in marathi and those little sparrows were uh, over the years we'd stop seeing sparrows which we used to see as kids but suddenly they've claimed and started coming back from somewhere so i think uh, you need to take time off to uh, take in the things which you're gaining at if you're losing something Thanks, ma'am. Sneha, you're up. Hi, Sneha. Hi, ma'am. It's a pleasure talking to you. Uh, so, basically, about my background, I've worked as a scientist in biocon R and D, and yeah. my manager is also uh, in the line. Uh, okay. So, uh, it's a good thing. Uh, so, great. Uh, so, I wanted to ask uh, that: uh, Have you ever encountered a point in your life, in your career, where you thought that maybe this is not the right choice for you? or because for us students like me uh, i have worked in biopharma company and then i had got a huge gap then i even taught at a college as a lecturer uh, then now i am like i'm still work trying to work to get into a pharma company but due to my gap it is not getting easier for me to get easily so uh, is there any like have you encountered any such uh, uh, you know uh, way where you thought that maybe this is the right thing or the gap has made you you know turn back and look back at your choices uh no firstly i think uh, uh, i mean i've not been in a similar situation but i to education right it may not be the same but i just told you how i went and i mean when i was doing my nephrology Uh, uh i thought uh, i hope the i wish that they hoped you know the young uh, students around wouldn't turn around and say auntie to me because i was at the i was way uh, uh, much but then you bring to the table a um, certain maturity because when you go back to a thing you may be uh, taking a little but you're faster on the uptake because you gain something in other horizons of it may not be exactly related to your work but i think as you mature you are better team players which you are not as a younger this thing 
uh, uh, so all these kind of things bring a little different and you make up for that lost time so uh, as a holistic uh, part of it and the rest of it you have to work harder so i mean because in your gap uh, technology may have come in new aspects may have come in so you need to quickly catch up on that and uh, organizations are uh, looking out for uh, you know and today uh, people have realized this advantage of people coming back and taking on uh, careers again in fact if you any of you all who uh, have in this thing uh, the department of science and technology dst is having a separate scheme for women coming back into the science stream and especially if they are from you know the pure sciences they have i'm some men have been putting out this thing can we have a dashboard kind of a thing on a you know areas where people because today you don't have to be physically present so if you are staying in a city a and you have a particular interest you want to you can get your funding from so like whether it's dbt dst they have all brought out extra schemes for women coming back so uh, if you uh, need a mentor in that particular field for your job if you ha already have one fine otherwise you might like to look out for newer avenues and pick up someone who's working in your area of interest and uh, along with your experience that you bring to the table you might like to think something different or out of the box instead of going into the same thing again correct and ma'am one last question i want you to ask how to keep yourself motivated like throughout the journey like how did you uh, i think uh, uh, firstly i never uh, i mean i looked at short term goals you know as to what is it that is going to make me happy instead of uh, looking at the end results that okay i'm going to be a general one day frankly i never looked at it i never thought of that i uh, probably at that time was okay if i'm how can i make if it's my little pediatric ward it's going to be the best how i'm going to make it the best how every child is going to be the happiest patient in this hospital so it was something which was broke it up into what would make me happy my goals were always what would make me happy right so i think that was what and then achieving that because nothing succeeds like success so if you put something so you put something which is just a little out of reach but is going to make you happy you could you can strive have that satisfaction having achieved something because then you start looking for the next one so i think all along i was always very particular about this like even now i've come into this chair and i'm doing something which was just not part of my this but because i said you bring experience from different sources to your table so i am actually a medical advisor to the newly formed cds now that sounds very big but frankly didn't have any con job content because cds was right Uh, the uh, you know the chairman defense staff for that post was created and he is the first cds so being on his staff as a medical advisor deputy chief i mean i was, even he didn't know what i'm supposed to do and i didn't even know what i was supposed to so then i started creating my own and my first challenge was i said i just took over and covid happened so i said look like for the armed forces let's you know make policy this things and change that and then i found that the biggest problem was people were scared to go out and talk to so i said so i went to walk up to him and i said i would like to set up a teleconsultation service for the armed forces so he said yeah that's a damn good idea and from because it was something which was self driven no one had any of these things then just then it's like what you you all all doing you know it was through networking since one knew the dg cdac and you know people i found out that mohali me there's a team which is so you this idea was uh, it came to my mind on 10th of may and 28th of may my beta version was done and it's with just two three people on my team who and none of us are it experts but doesn't matter it's the idea and how you push it with passion so a, on a daily ki you know we must do this by evening video conferences ye karna and then i didn't know again it's team work i didn't know what to call it so what did i do i'd been dean at afm so i'm just sharing for fun stories you know yeah. i just rang up my undergrads because the youngsters are much more fertile in their minds and as you grow it gets fossilized 
So I said, why am I scratching my head? I threw it like a little competition for my undergrad. I said, you know, have some name for me, yeah, which has services, which has teleconsultation, e, whatever you want. And then there were overnight and next morning I had 20 names. Can you imagine? I just had to pick Sehat. And it was Sehat became the name and the, the, the thing. So I said, and why? Because it is services for the armed forces. We are services, right? Services, e-health, assistance, and teleconsultation. That was Sehat. And it was born. And then I said, okay, I need a logo. So it, should we make cartoons? I said, what the hell? People, when they want, they want to see a doctor. So I then rang up the postgrads. I said, well, guys, you know, I need a logo for my uh, uh, this thing which I have to launch. And it needs to have a gender equality. I must have girls. I must have boys. I must have them smiling. And I must show, you must show technology. So you all can, any of you all can just go on to the website. It's www.sales.com. All postgraduates who've been my students, who one is in the Air Force, one is in the Army, one is in the Navy, they conceptualized it. They stood with a step, a telephone, and a tablet. And I got my logo. So in 24 hours, my web page was done, my name was done. Because I didn't say I'll you know try to figure it all out. I just threw it open into everyone. I said, Come on, let's do it together. So I think that's the way. Yeah. Uh, so just in the order of questions, since I'm, I'm moderating, Sukesh, you ask the question and after that, Rai. So Sukesh? Ma'am, so when you are a trailblazer or let's say you're doing something entirely unique or new, it is very difficult to find mentors. So how did you overcome that hurdle of finding a mentor even in a very young way? Uh, uh, no, I mean, see, I wanted to... Uh, different things right so it, it's not something uh, i don't have to have a mentor who is a woman who's a pediatrician who's a nephrologist who's done everything like i've done it doesn't matter so in my initial days it was more about soldiering right so i looked up to people who, around me who and i feel mentor is someone you can relate to it's not a uh, you can pick up a book and read about him and this thing. Mentor is someone you have to be able to. So at those times, I didn't need a general as a mentor. I probably needed a young captain or a major with a few more years of service that uh, telling me, I mean, how, what am I expected to do when I, you know, get into an officer's mess? I had no service background. So it's as per the need. And then when I went into pediatrics, you know, started doing something in that field, then it was, I said, okay, now I want to know someone I look up as. And I can quote the names because it was Dr. Amdekar who is, uh, and today, uh, you know, I've, I'm a mentor to his son. So it, the wheel goes right back. So he was uh, in JJ Hospital and I found that the way he related to patients, so I would just observe and said, okay, this is what I want to emulate. So it was at different stages when it was, I said, okay, you know, this as a woman, I'm going through difficult this thing. So I found Punita Arora. She was one of the first ladies to become a general. So I would, you know, talk to her. So along the way, and then it was nephrology I found. And today we are the best of friends. She's not even in India. She's the professor of, and today she's the president of the uh, Interna uh, International Society of Pediatric, IPNA, International Pediatric Nephrology Association. She's Yakui Kim. And we just became friends because then I first picked her up as a mentor because I wanted to start a dialysis program. And I said, okay, nearby India, who's doing it? Singapore wrote to her, went down there. And today, uh, I mean, so many years later, we are the best of friends. So I think it's about uh, a need which you, and you look around, you find, and uh, mentors would give you reinforcement. But I think you're learning all the time. When you meet some seniors and you meet some colleagues and you don't like something about you, even that is a learning because you say, okay, I'm not going to do like this because I mean, the way he carries or the way she talks and hurts people like him, I think it's a horrible thing. I don't want to do that. So uh, that itself also is a learning process. Uh, Madhuri, uh, you, you said 45 minutes. We are at 45 minutes. I'm just letting you know. Um, yeah, thank you so much, but I seem to be enjoying and uh, this thing. So I think uh, if there are any couple of people who got left out, let me uh, take their question. Thanks so, so much, so, Nare. So, so it's Rai and then after that, Sabiha. Yeah, so both of you all take your questions. Quick, yeah. quick. Hi, ma'am. 
So I'm uh, doing my PhD in uh, pediatric brain tumor from Tata Memorial Center in uh, Mumbai. So uh, I wanted to know in your younger days, who inspired you to be who you are today? Did you have a inspiration? I think to uh, I think my most young days, uh, uh, someone who's influenced me was probably my grandmother. And uh, I mean, she was an amazing lady in, her, in the early 1900s, a child widow, someone who'd been an orphan and, uh, you know, brought up by someone else, but had worked her way through to and become a doctor and worked in Africa. I mean, her stories were so inspiring that uh, that was one thing. And the second, like we were three sisters and Narendra's all of us. And, and I think we were never ever... Um, in any way told ki okay you know you can't do this because you're a girl so i think uh, so in that sense my father was a huge role model of uh, independently thinking and you know bring out and my mom would always say you know i've been a housewife which we and we loved her for what she did but she would all the time no no you must be like your aji you know that's grandmother i mean because she so it was a mix of all that i think which uh, really influenced my early years yeah. and did you have a turning point in your life as in you know the one which we called as an inflection point so do you yes something like that? yes and it was like uh, this thing i think the turning point was when i was in 12th standard and i had wanted to do medicine because my grandmother and i mean it was all sort of you know a science talent i have to do that that and i had never heard of the armed forces have this roommate in my hostel who's a air force officer's daughter and uh, so she says that uh, why aren't you giving the exam for and i'd never heard of a place called afmc so uh, she took me there and i think that was and there narain's elder sister was already studying there so i met her there and these two things of having seen a fantastic campus which permitted uh, I mean, there was a huge importance given to sports and, you know, what have you and the infrastructure and the discipline. So that was, I think, the, uh, two things happened. One was I visited and I was very impressed. And uh, Anjali, his sister, in fact, she took me around and, uh, you know, uh, really uh, showed this thing. So that was something which I loved it. And the second uh, was I met my future husband. Who joined who was going to you know be an army officer so i think these were the two turning points and suddenly i was heading towards being a doctor probably would have you know done my mbbs pushed off like most gone to the us done something and blah 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 and suddenly it was a turning point and i made that my life and my career that's great that's great <laughs> uh, sabia hello ma'am yeah hi sabia uh, Ma'am, this is Sabiha and I am pursuing my post-graduation in Microbiology from MS Ramaya College in Bangalore. Uh, ma'am, I have like a one question related to failures, ma'am. Actually, ma'am, uh, actually failures are a, are a part of our life. Both, if we can't succeed without failures, ma'am. So what yes. is in our life, ma'am, what happened like when we get continuous failures in our life? And if we try to overcome that failure, again, that fear of failures come in our mind, ma'am. It will definitely come in our mind, ma'am. Yes, so yes. That, uh, that is human. Firstly, that is human and it is normal. Because we are all the time striving because we have a fear of failure. And uh, at that time, you know, wanting to give up is the first thing. That, you know, this didn't work out. But... Uh, at that point, if you think objectively or you need a friend, you need a mentor, you need a peer who looks at it from outside. Because when you failure, you know, you're thinking only from your perspective and you start blaming yourself. So instead of that, if you can have a mentor, a friend or a, uh, a teacher or some person or a, uh, you know, elder relative, whatever it could be on, who helps you look at it objectively as to what is it that contributed to that failure. I think you learn more from failures than from successes because it's not only helps you get over it, but it's taught you a few other things. You know, I mean, probably at that time I was too fast to make a decision or probably, you know, uh, something which happened, which I let it control this thing. Or was it that my effort was a little lesser? 
because if you come objectively you know what to do for that right otherwise you keep on saying ki nahi ye to aise hi hona hai so i think that is very important that it's firstly that the failure is going to teach you and secondly is to look at that failure objectively and also relatively what you may be thinking that ye to bilkul hi failure hai i, I, I think science is shown enough there are so many times nice. where something given up you know a new molecule comes out of a failure or a new drug comes out of a so called failure so again that's a relative term no so and the a winner is one who says that one last time i'm going to again try I, i know it's like getting late for me but i must quote this one thing i was doing interviews for afmc selection and three consecutive years i've done the interviews and third year there was this boy and i recognized him i said tum pichle saal bhi aaye the pichle saal he says ma'am uske pehle bhi aaya tha this is my fourth attempt i said ki i mean char saal mein to tum bsc bhi khatam hoti why are you still trying for you know his answer floored me he said madam pichle saal i had come for the interview and i was waiting up there and you know this black gleaming staff car with this lal batti and jhanda came and you got out of it in mock so you know there and uh, and i said no if it requires one more year i want to be i want to join and wear this uniform and be like that and i worked harder and he had come very high in merit and he joined the college so i mean anyone else would have given up but i i said hats off to a guy because i think he is the most successful guy who all the others would have given up but this guy found that one reason to hang on and he is going to be more successful because he's found that one thing of hanging on when everyone gives up last question who was it there was one more or we done no there's camellia one more there are yeah. many more but <laughs> camellia is <laughs> yeah because 9:30 oh, like I, I, my energy level is finished yeah yeah, yeah. camellia so, hi camellia uh, hi uh, hello ma'am uh, i'm from uh, i am actually working as a jrf at iit gandhinagar and my question to to you is that uh, you have been a trail blazer and uh, being a woman in in the field that you are currently working in that's really something great so i want to ask you have you ever dealt with any performance pressure and if you all the time how did you overcome it uh again prioritizing because see when uh, when do you get into performance uh, pressures come in when you start doing well you know the expectations get more and more and more and you want to pull out your hair because you want to do everything because you and everyone expects so much out of you that and there's one of you with 24 hours in the day and you need to eat and sleep also so that's the time then you start prioritizing and learning to say no that i can't handle this that like i'm giving an example even like i mean i love being with youngsters and the fact that i said that sawa no but i'm going to switch off but i'm continuing is this reason that you know that i i have given myself now that i can't handle more than these and i must be able to say no so i think that's one thing that uh, one learns to uh, this thing on performance pressures and then trying to prioritize as to what means at this moment what i have to do so you divide out and try to again you know say ki, okay some other things which don't and the other thing uh, was something which i learned from my husband uh, i was a perfectionist i mean i wanted everything that i was doing my post graduation and i'd be studying the whole this thing and come back home and there'd be my little son and husband would sit at home and then i would start you know cleaning because the wash basin wasn't sparkling clean and then the kitchen wasn't so i wanted that rubbed up and i wanted and then i'd obviously get irritable and just one day my husband turned around and told me he says you know why don't you be less than perfect you'll be happier and we'll be happier so uh, and i said my god i never thought of it he says how does it matter wo basin ganda raha to kya farak padega tum aate hi you're tired in so saying hello and sitting and chatting you wanted to scrub that thing ki ye bhi cheek hona hai wo bhi cheek hona so i think that's another thing when pressures get too much you got to say ki look i don't have to be a perfect for he- to hell with some of the things 
Does that answer the question? Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much, Madhuri. Love Thank you so much. much. Last and final it's been word lovely. Your, just final yeah. word from you and then we can close. Yeah. Well, final word is this, that go for it. Yeah. I mean, don't ever give up on anything because you have this one life. Live it. Live it to your full and let that passion remain with you all through. Don't let anything get it down. Okay? It, it, because all the getting downs are temporary. It's only when hit the ground harder, you can bounce back faster. Good. Okay? Thank you, thank you so, so much. Go for it. And, and okay, bye-bye. Everyone else so can stay bye -bye. on because I'd like to hear your feedback. <laughs> anyway, but no. one, <laughs> Yeah, and you must give a feedback or, or if you can, give, you know, compile out and give a feedback to me from Naren because it's been lovely interacting with each one of you. Bye, girls. Bye. And bye, boys, also. Thank there were only a couple of them. So, uh, I mean, uh, uh, that's... Uh, but it was lovely. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. A network should last a lifetime. Let us help you create lasting professional relationships with our world-class mentors through the Biopatrika Industry Mentorship Program. A strategic guidance program unlike no other, full of expert interviews, industry internship opportunities, CV writing, inflection point analysis, life maps and of course the gateway to your dream career. For a limited time only, all our services are freely available for you as we truly want you to succeed.